Hi, I'm Pat and welcome back to the channel. Today I have the Acura NSX being featured in this particular video because I want to talk about batteries and how to keep them charged. If you're new to the channel, please click the subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. I'll be posting more car stuff like this. Well, today I want to talk about the battery that's in the Acura NSX and how it works and how to make sure that it doesn't run out when it's parked for a long period of time here in the garage. Just like the BMW i8, this is a hybrid car. That means that it has a high voltage battery and it also has a 12 volt battery. The 12 volt battery in this car is up here under the front hood and the high voltage battery is behind the seats. It's actually in this position. So what do these two things do together? Well, Number one, the 12 volt battery maintains the accessories for the car, as well as your airbags, your seat belts, all your different safety systems, including the ignition for the mid-engine. The high voltage battery provides power and traction for the two electric motors that are on the front axle, as well as the electric motor that is attached to the engine itself. So how does that high voltage battery get charged? Well, it has to come from the car when it's driving. Unlike the i8, which is a plug-in hybrid, this hybrid requires that you actually drive the car in order to charge the high voltage battery. In fact, there's a sticker under the hood that says you want to drive it every so often because if you don't, you may end up killing that battery and it could be a very expensive repair. But today's video is more about the 12 volt battery. Unlike the i8 where you plug it in and it charges the high voltage battery, which also maintains the 12 volt battery, Nothing maintains the 12 volt battery in this car, except for driving it, of course. So, if it's going to be parked for a long period of time, it's a good idea to install a trickle charger on the 12 volt battery. In fact, Acura even provides a dealer installed charger that you could connect to the car, and I found some information online that shows exactly how to hook that up. Now, the instruction guide for installing the dealer installed charger well, that's not for DIYers like me. They recommend that anybody that wants to have this installed actually take it to the dealer. That way they can ensure that you don't damage your car. It does look like a simple process where you remove some panels, you cut a hole, you install some wiring, and then you have the ability to plug the charger in. But interestingly enough, trickle charging this car using that method requires you to either shut the passenger door onto the cable or leave your window down. So it's kind of an interesting situation, <laughs> but my car does not have the dealer installed option on it. So I'm gonna do it the way I would want to have it done. And that is getting under the hood. So let's take a look at the product that I decided to purchase that I'm gonna to install today on the Acura NSX. Here is the SeaTac charger that I have. And in fact, this same charger, if you take a look at it, actually looks exactly the same as the charger that is provided by NSX. And that is because NSX rebrands the SeaTech brand. Now, I have a link in the description below. This charger is easily found online. Of course, we can go to FCP Euro, one of my favorite parts suppliers, because they have a 100% lifetime guarantee on everything. So if this breaks, you could send it back for a replacement. Or there are other links in the description as well. But I highly recommend FCP Euro. Now, if we take a look inside the kit, of course, we have an instruction manual, but we also have some wiring here. This is what I'm going to use today. So what is this? This makes sure that I actually maintain a connection to the 12 volt battery full time. It has a few little eyelets here, and there's a quick disconnect that actually connects to this unit. And then I can get rid of these cables. I don't need jumper style cables. So once this is installed in the Acura NSX, I could leave this part at home. This part's on the car. When I pull the car in and I want to charge it, I just undo this cable and connect the two. So let's get started on installing this. All right, so let's open up the NSX and I'll show you exactly how to release the hood. So down here and on the left is a little hood switch. We give it a pull and the hood opens up. Next, we release the hood by just moving this lever and it opens up all on its own. Now, our battery is actually located under here. 
so we need to remove this panel in order to access the top of the 12 volt battery. Next, there are two tabs right here. And if we push back on those tabs while pulling forward a little bit on this weather stripping area, we should be able to pry this up. There we go. And that just covers the 12 volt battery. So right here is a small size 47, 60 amp hour, 600 cold cranking amp, 12 volt AGM battery. It's pretty small. So it certainly can run out of power if you happen to leave some accessories on in the car or if the car is just sitting here and listening and waiting to respond to your wireless remote. So it's very important that we do place this on a trickle charger. Now I do have access underneath this panel area to allow that little extension to sit so that I can plug in my charger so I don't always have to remove this panel. So let's take a closer look at the battery and get some tools to be able to connect the little pigtail connector for the SeaTac charger. All right, on this side of the battery, there's a small cover here and it looks like you have to pull up and then rotate in order to get access to the positive terminal. And over here is the negative terminal. Now I have a 10 millimeter wrench here, so I should be able to loosen, but this looks like it's a pretty tight fit. So I have my safety glasses on and I am not touching anything metal right now so that I can work on the 12 volt positive post and not actually hurt myself and complete a circuit. So what I'm trying to do here, and this is not the easiest thing to do because I don't have much clearance, is to be able to undo this nut that's on this post and then insert the little pigtail into this area. So I'm gonna work on that right now. So I've gone ahead and loosened it up enough that I could actually pull it off of the battery and that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to place an object on here so that it won't touch when I go ahead and release pressure from that terminal. So I found this little rag here and I'm just going to have this standing by ready to go. Let me loosen this up a little bit more just to make sure that I can get it all the way off the battery post. Okay. Now I'm just going to place this cloth on here in order to prevent me from having these two posts touch again. And now I can actually take and undo the nut completely so that I can stick the little pigtail end right where this is at. All right, so I went ahead and removed the nut. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this side of the stud and that way I can place my little pigtail on this side and it doesn't impact the ability of this nut to keep pressure on the other side. So I don't want anything on that side. I'll just place it on this side. So here's my little pigtail. Of course, here's my quick disconnect. And here's the red side. So I'm going to go ahead and just place this through there and put this back through here and go ahead and start tightening this nut. Okay, that's tight enough now that I can go ahead and just place this right back on the battery. So that's what I'm going to do. Just take this rag out of the way and I'll place it right on top of the battery post and it'll reconnect. And now I can retighten it using this 10 millimeter wrench. All right, that's good and tight. I'm going to go ahead and slide the cover back in place and then this side will be all covered up. There we go. That sits there just nicely. Let's go ahead and just take this negative battery terminal off then. This one's really easy to get to since I'm right here. I can use my socket. So we're going to do the same thing we did before. I'm going to remove it and then just place this rag over the connection. That way the two of them won't connect. And I could work on this. All right, so I went ahead and cleaned up this bolt. It had a little bit of corrosion here on the end. So I'm going to go ahead and slip this ring over the bolt. And this is the black side, so this is for negative. And I'm going to place that through here and install the nut on the other end. And once I get this tightened down, I'm going to go ahead and reinstall it on top of the battery, just as I did on the positive side. There we go. I can go ahead and remove this. Then I can place this right down on top of the battery. And that completes our negative connection. I can go ahead and tighten, <laughs> tighten the 11 millimeter nut. There we 
we go. All right, now that everything's connected up, I can go ahead and feed this wire down and out of the way of the battery compartment. And in fact, right here's a good place for it because there's no moving parts here. So it could just dangle and actually not impact anything. I like that. Let's go ahead and put the cover back on top. Next, I could take our SeaTech battery charger and go ahead and connect it to this pigtail. Now, it only goes one way, so there's a, a push button here to release it, and I want to make sure that on the other side, it also connects with that same push button. So that way, it clicks into place, and then it won't come out. So that's really good. Next, we're going to make sure that our SeaTech uh, charger is in a good location here where we can monitor the lights on it. Now it does have an AGM light on here, which is great because we have an AGM battery. So let me plug it up next. And already we have a light here. It's already showing. I could switch modes to AGM. Huh. Looks like it's working exactly as it's supposed to. So we got some charging that's going on here, and when it's completely full, it'll go all the way up. So looking at the lights here on the indicator, I have the AGM light lit up, and it's already starting to charge. And if we take a look here at the manual, it'll also indicate exactly what's happening as we go along. It's actually going through a soft start, bulk absorption, analyze, recondition, float, and pulse, so that you can leave this connected all the time. Now that's terrific. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this connected for now. It's going to be going through its testing process and ensuring everything is okay. And as long as I have that little green light here and no, no warning light here, that means everything's connected correctly. So this is actually good to go. Now what's really great about this is that you can almost completely shut the hood. So if I really wanted to park the car outside, I could. And then that way I don't have to worry about pinching wires in the door. And, well, it's working terrific. So take a look. This is the SeaTac MX 5.0. It is designed to work well with this AGM battery. And I can leave it plugged up here and here, and it'll continue to trickle charge the car. So that's how easy this is. All you need is some simple hand tools, 10 millimeters, and the ability to get inside the car and you could connect this SeaTech charger that I just bought to your NSX or any other car. That's right, this SeaTech will actually work on any car. So give it a try. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing and ringing that bell for notifications as I'll be posting more content like this. And be sure to check out the links in the description to see how you can obtain your own charger and the parts that I use to work on the car today. Any questions or comments, drop them in the comment box below. Thanks for watching and happy motoring.